Hello, welcome to our webinar, Chiral Method Development and Optimization on Dicyl Polysaccharide Chiral Stationary Phases. Thanks for joining us today. We especially appreciate your attendance right now while many of us are still struggling to balance professional and personal needs, and we hope you all stay safe and healthy. My name is Tracy Hartledge. I'm a sales manager for Chiral Technologies and will be your moderator for today's session. Presenting today's webinar is Dr. Weston Umstead, Manager of Technology here at Chiral Technologies. Time permitting, we will open up the floor for questions. However, if time should run over, we will supply our technical support email at the end of this presentation. Please feel free to reach out to our technical support team or your local sales manager for assistance. We have placed a copy of today's presentation along with our product list in the handout section of the control panel. I now turn the microphone over to Dr. Weston Umstead. Wes, the floor is yours. All right, well, good morning or good afternoon to everyone who is tuning in today. I uh, appreciate it very much. As uh, Tracy said, our topic of discussion today is going to be on method development for our uh, polysaccharide chiral stationary phases. Uh, so to get us started, here is just a short overview of the topics we are going to touch on today. Um, obviously, you start with an introduction to chiral chromatography and uh, a look at the separation mechanism, uh, which is extremely important, helps us understand why we need to implement a screening approach. Most of our time is going to be spent uh, talking about method development strategies for HPLC and SFC, things like experimental design, uh, mobile phase composition uh, optimization, as well as the use of additives. And then time permitting at the end, we'll touch on some new products that we have to offer, uh, namely our sub two micron immobilized polysaccharides for UHPLC and our newest immobilized polysaccharide chiral pack IJ. So to get us started today, just so we're all on the same page, um, these are the polysaccharide chiral selectors that we're going to be focusing on. We've got our chiral pack line of columns, which encompasses both coated amylose, as well as all of the immobilized columns. Easy to tell the difference between those two. The coated amylose uh, are all columns that start with an A, so things like AD and AS. And then the immobilized columns all start with I, IA, IBN, so forth. And then our chiral cell coated cellulose columns uh, are a little confusing, perhaps start with O, uh, OD, OZ, for instance. That O actually stands for, uh, is in, uh, tribute to Professor Okamoto, who is the innovator of the technology um, that Dicel currently uses. So the first generation coded phases, we are looking at AD through OZ. They are good for normal phase, polar organic mode, reversed phase, as well as SFC. And then our second generation immobilized columns are compatible with those same mobile phases, in addition to uh, what we call forbidden normal phase solvents or extended range solvents, uh, things that contain dichloromethane and THF, for instance, and those would be, uh, as I mentioned, IA through now IJ. Uh, in total, we'll be looking at 24 polysaccharide chiral stationary phases, with chiral pack IJ being the newest one available. This is a small little snapshot of what that looks like for the immobilized columns from our chiral selector poster. Um, in total, there are 18 unique selectors. That is because there are several that are shared between coded and immobilized. And in the case of IB and IBN, it's actually the same selector um, between the two versions. Uh, just for your own enrichment, uh, IA is the immobilized version of chiral pack uh, AD. Uh, IB, IBN is the immobilized version of OD. Uh, IF is the immobilized version of AZ. IH is the immobilized version of AS, and as I already mentioned, our newest one, IJ, is the immobilized version of OJ. Now, in some cases, you have a choice between amylose or cellulose, uh, which actually imparts some very unique uh, separations characteristics, which I will show you in a few slides from now. Uh, but very quickly, we'll look at the derivatization process. It's kind of important to understand, especially when we talk about solvent restrictions. So you can easily take a cellulose or amylose unmodified polymer and react it with a derivatized isocyanate, in this case, 3,5-dimethylphenyl isocyanate. And in doing so, you will yield a uh, cellulose derivatized 
tris 35 dimethyl phenyl carbamate polymer, which can then be dissolved up in a strong solvent like dichloromethane or THF, coated onto your porous silica gel, dried down, yielding a coated phase, in this case, chiral cell OD. Um, if you were to implement an immobilization process at the end, uh, you now have the immobilized version, which in this case is Chiropac IB or Chiropac IBN. And because these polymers are soluble in these strong organic solvents like dichloromethane and THF, this is why the coated phases are restricted to uh, not being able to utilize these, uh, these organic solvents. But in the case of the immobilized columns, uh, you can certainly use those without any issues. Now, if we look at the polymer structure, um, it's not linear like you might think. Um, it actually forms a left-handed twist uh, helical structure that you see shown here. This is chiral cell OC, which is trisphenyl carbamate cellulose. So you'll notice here that the structure, as I said, is a helical structure. It's a left-handed twist. But in for forming this structure, you see these little pockets, which we call chiral grooves. And these chiral grooves are important because that is where the analyte is going to interact with the selector. You see here the phenyl groups as the selectors form all sorts of different orientations throughout these chiral grooves. And those orientations are going to dictate um, whether a, a stationary phase will or will not separate. And within those grooves, there can be a number of intermolecular reactions that can take place um, that will elicit, hopefully, a separation. Primarily what we're going to be looking at is hydrogen bonding, steer kindrance, pi-pi interactions, and dipole-dipole interactions. And some combination of these, uh, at least three or more, uh, will hopefully provide an energy difference between the two enantiomers, thus resulting in a separation. So the three-point interaction model is kind of highlighted well or demonstrated well here in this easton Stedman model, where you've got a drug binding site, or in our case, it will be a chiral selector site which can um, potentially form three interactions with the enantiomers, the active or the inactive enantiomer. A, B, and C could be something like hydrogen bonding, pi-pi uh, stacking, and dipole-dipole interactions. And so your active enantiomer, or the one that is going to be retained the longest, obviously has a nice match of those three interactions. So uh, there will be some amount of energy um, the inactive enantiomer has the same functional groups, but they are in a different orientation and therefore do not line up as well with the chiral selector. And therefore the inactive enantiomer would be the one that's eluding the quickest. Even if you were to take this and rotate it, you do not have the same kind of a match as you do with the active enantiomer. And so the energy difference here should hopefully be enough to separate these two um, enantiomers from each other on the column. Now, in reality, it's a little bit more complicated than that because everything is going to be solvated by mobile phase, both the selector as well as the analytes. And so in the ideal fit, you'll have some solvent exclusion. In the non-ideal fit, you'll have some solvation that still occurs. Um, this might not seem like it's a huge deal, except the solvation status of different functional groups can result in different separations, say, between a hexane ethanol mobile phase and a hexane IPA mobile phase. That's demonstrated here by the separation on chiral cell OJ. It's the same stationary phase across all of these mobile phases, but as you go from 100% methanol to 100% ethanol, you go from the positive enantiomer eluding first to actually co-elution here at one point, and then finally, the negative enantiomer eluding first. So you have complete reversal of elution order as a result of changing the salvation status, essentially, of the uh, selector as well as the analytes. Now, I mentioned in some cases you've got a choice between cellulose and amylose as a polymer, the difference being in the way the glucose monomers are linked to each other, beta linkage in the case of cellulose and an alpha linkage in the case of amylose. And if you look at the helical structures then of the corresponding cellulose versus amylose, uh, go back to chiral cell OC here and chiral pack AC, you can see that both still form the chiral grooves that I talked about before, but looking at the amylose version, the chiral uh, grooves are very different in terms of size and shape. And it also puts the chiral selectors in very different orientations versus the cellulose uh, version. So to see a, a real world demonstration of this, 
you could see pretty dramatic results. Uh, ruling here as an example on chiral cell OD and chiral pack AD, it's the same selector, it's 3,5 dimethyl phenyl carbamate, except chiral pack AD is on amylose, uh, chiral cell OD is on cellulose. And at first glance here, you might think that uh, both are separating ruling relatively well. However, uh, if you look at the PDR detector, which is a, a chiral detector, you'll notice that uh, in the case of OD, uh, the positive enantiomer is being eluded first. And in the case of chiral pack AD, it's actually a reversal of elution order, uh, which might not seem intuitively obvious, but it is something that can take place just by switching the polymer source. Well, one more example of that uh, here is prilocaine. Prilocaine is a chiral molecule. It is um, slightly basic. So if we were to screen this on, say, uh, normal phase conditions, hexane IPA with DEA in the mobile phase, you've got four possible interactions that can take place. Uh, chiral pack IA, 3,5 dimethyl phenyl carbamate on amylose gives you just a very partial separation, hint of separation. If we move to cellulose, which is uh, chiral pack IB, we now have almost baseline resolution. And if we change up the um, electronics of the selector and go to chiral pack IC, we now have a nice baseline resolution. And so the point of this is to say, again, if you have a molecule and we have a handful of columns, there is no good way to predict which column and which mobile phase combination is going to yield you the best separation.